Hello and welcome to Talks with Tony. I'm Mariana Kim. I'm the producer of this podcast. And here with me today is Attila, who's the head of people at AirAsia Digital. Welcome to the program. Hi, thanks. Thanks, Where's Mariana. Tony, by the way? Somewhere around Lurk in the <laughs> building. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> shoot. I'm here. <laughs> Well, this is the first ever episode of Talks with Tony, and we thought the best way to open this is to introduce Tony to the world. I'm sure many people already know much about your story, but today we hope to see a side of Tony that the world has never seen. So will you give okay. us a scoop? Absolutely. Uh, all well, right. Depends cool. what you ask me. But all right. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, we're not going to ask you about Air Asia. Good. <laughs> I think everyone knows about that. I think it's a great idea and credit to Mariana uh, for coming up with this idea. We thought being different from other podcasts that before we interview other people, uh, the, the guy running the show should be interviewed and yep. you should get to know him and his values and what he thinks, etc. So uh, great idea, Mariana. All right, so you will be on the hot seat today answering questions and so how have you been? I felt good today, this morning, you know, because I did a lot of gym. I, I walked eight kilometers up many hills. Generally, I'm feeling that stomach's going down. So I feel the hard work's paying off. Well, we can see that too. Yeah, and, and you said you were on some type of almond diet. Before, well, no, or... it's, you know, I've learned so much about food and there's so many different types of food. But really, the reality of food is whatever diet you have is eat less carbo, eat less. I think one of the great Period. things, the one thing is that I only eat what's on my plate. Mm. And so you put a little bit of, you know, your rice substitute, a little bit of vegetable, a little bit of meat, and you put your dessert all on the same plate. And that's it. That's it. That's the discipline. Malaysians and Asians generally, the food's all over the place, right? So you never, you know, this portion control doesn't exist in mm, our diet. Mm, mm. And, you know, people who are with you want you to eat more. Right. So that's a big step forward. Secondly is, you know what's good and what's bad. Well, I do now, right? Carbo, sugar. Sugar is, you know, is death. As long as you moderate that. Another thing which I was pretty bad at because, you know, I'm working all the time. I'm talking, as you know, working with me. A one-hour meeting could be three hours because there's two hours of comedy in between, right? I don't drink enough water. So I now, with my Apple Watch, I register my water intake, and that has made a big difference. And then the next thing about, you know, obviously uh, this one impact everyone, but I've led a very stressful life and especially the last the 15 months and stress releases something called cortisol. Now that's a hormone that actually, if you go back to caveman time, if you're running away from a dinosaur, cortisol is kind of excreted in adrenaline. Adrenaline is to make you run faster. And if you're stuck in a cave in minus 20 degrees in Seoul, caveman land, then you know, your body knows you're cold and it, it it secretes cortisol, which builds up your fat so you can live longer. Now, that didn't take into consideration an airline which has 245 planes on the ground. And so cortisol is being extracted into me a lot mm. and that builds up a lot of fat. Right. So while I'm watching my weight, I've also had to deal with a lot of stress, which adds to your weight, lack of sleep. And so the way to deal with that and Azran at, you know, Naluri and our ex-CEO at AirAsia Rex told me the best way to do it is exercise. So if those of you who follow me on Instagram, I'll be doing weights and running and cycling. But the most important thing is discipline, right? If you think about the discipline of AirAsia, we've had the same model for 18 years. I haven't been tempted to put business class seats in. I haven't been tempted to get bigger planes or whatever. We've kept the discipline of the model mm pretty much. We've built the business out and AirAsia Group is much more than an airline now. But we've been disciplined in the airline model. So I would say I'm disciplined, but disciplined in terms of my health? No. I, I haven't been, but this is the first time I, I feel that I've got a chance. But let's see, talk is cheap. Do you have a routine that you follow religiously? Yeah, like no, religiously, it's, it's impossible. Mm. I don't have that in my, my life because my life is not routine. I got up in the morning, I brushed my teeth, I shaved, I changed into my gym gear. I had to have a meeting with someone in the sauna. And then I did my exercise. And then I had meetings nonstop mm. uh, until lunch. And then I'm here. 
So in, in a previous interview that you had, I think you said like you were OCD. Yeah. Right. OCD. So, you know, order, uh, sequence is really important for you. And yet you are living a life which is dynamic. I mean, AirAsia from the startup, right? You've got, you know, we're growing now into a digital space. We've got dynamic conditions. How do you square the two? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I'm a classic OCD, but I am OCD, as you can see from some of my responses on Chile, right? Oh, where's this? Where's this? Where's this? And then I'm OCD when I hate mess mm. on a desk, right? If you go to my office, there's very little paper on my desk, right? I don't have that. And I'm yeah. OCD in terms of organizing my CDs by by genre, right? It's if it's not R and B, then it isn't in the R and B section, right? Wow. What about your clothes? Uh, <laughs> do you do it by color? No. Okay, I, you know, not that bad. There was this wonderful movie with Richard Gere called American Gigolo, and you know when he opens his wardrobe, Mariana wouldn't know, but you would because you're my age. When he opens his wardrobe, and Attila's kind of borderline. He's metrosexual. Um, <laughs> there's only one person I've seen with a, with a Richard Gere wardrobe, and that's Nazi Raza. You know, it's like, wow, that was always my dream, right? The suits are all in the right color. The, you know, Jay has his, glove, his golf gloves all by color coordinated. Um, no, I'm not that way. I'd like to. I haven't reached I remember that. Nazir Razak um, said you have a mild form of ADHD, which is like another, yeah, um, yeah disorder. Yeah, yeah everyone, my, my, my ex-wife right? said that. A lot of people <laughs> have said that. Um, I don't, I mean, I, I can obviously focus a long time in meetings and maybe the way I cope with it is changing the subject lots, right? And mm. Making humor and stuff like that. I don't have, I always said I have the attention span of a doornail and you've got to be interesting to keep me Mm. interested right but i you know i don't feel i am adhd but everyone says i am um but so I, at who, the end of the day i think doubt? what you're saying is it doesn't matter because when you when you focus in on, on the thing that you you want to do yeah right that's what oh matters. yeah i'm pretty focused on that like it's not easy to go out and build an airline right but i think there's elements of adhd i think i have a low attention span if i'm not interested sure and then i have elements of was it OC? OCD? OCD. OCD, definitely. So COVID has allowed me to have a routine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Get up in the morning, yeah. go to the gym, mm -hmm. you know, cycle in the evening, eat at the right time and sleep at the right time. Yeah. You know, I was burning the candle at both ends, yeah. right? So... Um, and being in the same time zone, because you used to fly yeah, everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Right? I mean, the time zone really screws you up. You know, I would do day trips to London, right? I mean, that's not, a, that's not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd go in the morning, have my meetings, and come back at night. I would go and see my daughter because I missed her so much when she went to boarding school. I would leave the office on Friday night, arrive in London on Saturday, drive to her school and pick her up, and then fly back on Sunday. Business goals also, in a strange way, you know, this has been a very good period to kind of, because, look, I love people, right? I love people, and I think you very rarely see me sitting down in a desk in Red Q or Central for more than an hour because I'll just wander around. I'll drive to the academy. I'll go. I mean, but that's our culture, and that's been beneficial. But I'm hell of a lot more productive during COVID. The truth be known, that that has taken an you know obviously that is not good for the culture of the airline, but we couldn't do much anyway because we're all at home. So it'll be interesting when we get back to normal life, how I balance that, because I'm definitely more productive at home. So if you're more productive at home, and I mean, look, the business aside, because everyone's business has been challenged, right? What's the biggest challenge that you found personally during COVID? Because you've got more discipline in a sense, you're more productive. Is it family? Yeah, Is it keeping in people, touch? People, right? Yeah. People. I mean, I'm a, I'm a touchy-feely. I like being with people. I I like to interact. I like to walk to the airport. I like to go to the roof at AirAsia Red Q and see the planes taking off. I was a plane spotter. You still like doing that? I do. Wow. I mean, I you know, little secret that when we were at LCC um, and before the LCC, actually, when we were at the main terminal building, when we had the office by Malaysian Airlines, Ramp Boys. You know, my office was right by the Malaysian Airlines Ramp Boys. And they never understood that. They used to come to me and say, why is your office here? I said, because I want to be close to the planes. And they said, you know, it's so cool because we've never, we don't even know our boss. As opposed to Central KL. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it was central there. It M- was, MAS yeah. was yeah. next to the equatorial. Yeah. Opposite the equatorial. Yeah, I think it's so important. to be, You've got to be in the place where your business is, right? But I used to, during times of stress, i just take my little Ford Transit and drive to where our hangar is, which wasn't a hangar then, and just watch our planes take off and land. So now that we've transited, I mean, transitioning to a digital business where, you know, touch points, you know, we all talk about Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. And and, um, and how, you know, they may cover thousands of people, but they've never met any one of them, right? Mm. Whereas AirAsia staff, AirAsia all stars, almost get to meet every single one of them, right? Mm. How how have you translated that into the digital? Yeah, well, business? I think that's you know, that, and that's where our strength will be. Mariana was telling me yesterday that a, a big unicorn is looking for someone to manage their CEO. I mean, that's just preposterous. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I have people managing, helping me with social media and stuff, but I don't think anyone could manage me anyway. But I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that you know the digital world seems to be obsessed with the computer screen and making the product the best. I don't think that's the most important. I think the most important is the delivery guy, is the food that you get, is whether it tastes good and whether it's heated, right? And so I think many digital companies have missed a trick that it is still a people's business and that's what we're good at. And you can't manufacture that. We have come from 19 years of dealing with people, whether they're happy or unhappy. We're the most transparent company. You look at our Facebook and everyone's whacking us for for not having refunds. We're not trying to run away from that. We're not trying to hide from that. I do think it's a people's business, and I think that's our strength. We may not be the fastest super tech in the galaxy, but I think we'll replace it with Seoul. Well, speaking of social media, you're very active on Instagram. You have about 350,000 followers. What kind of content do you like to consume? What do you find interesting? Do you watch like food porn? (laughs) Oh, me? Following on Instagram? Yeah. It's funny you said that. Because I've been on a diet, um, I've been following a lot of food sites because Mm. I fantasize, right? My dream in life is to be able to donate fat to thin people. Can you imagine (laughs) if Mariana could just... That's the new health in here, <laughs> and it goes into whatever part of the body she needs to get fat in. Uh, that would be the ultimate invention: low cost fat transfer. <laughs> yeah. Just stick un- it in un- and un- take it. Un- kill, un- kill it. Can you imagine if I could just you and me until I could go to an AirAsia plane and stick it in and fill up our plane, <laughs> power it, and the plane goes to KK? That'd be so hot. Um, yeah, so I think, don't irritate us, Mariana, by talking about <laughs> food porn. But yeah, I mean, I, it's my new thing. I read it in a book. That if you feel hungry, drink water and think about food. Mentally think about it. So I use Instagram for that. I follow a lot of football. And invariably, my Instagram is full of cabin crew. Um, so you invariably see a lot of that. But I, I wouldn't say I'm a big follower of Instagram. I see many women and men, you know, just they use it as reference and stuff. I use it more as a tool for communication. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm not really interested in what other people say, to be honest. I'm interested in it communicating with my audience, right? What about YouTube where you've got to watch something? I mean, yeah, what? I've been using YouTube a lot for, I love tech. I mean, I, you know, if you want to know about me, I'm, I'm the first guy to download the beta version of Apple. I'm the first guy to, insist i get the new apple watch um i love tech i get excited so youtube is a lot of that and sport i I use youtube for a lot of sport in catching up with highlights and stuff so i was born with music in my life right and I, i will die with music in my life i bought my first lp i don't think many kids would do this well they were now especially but i bought my first album when i was five years old at world supermarket right the Supremes, a go-go. That's my first album. And I begged my father to buy it for me, right? I mean, I couldn't get on. In those days, they used to have these high chairs so you could put on headphones and listen to the music. Where you had sound booths, right? Which you go, and I couldn't reach. Um, but to my father's credit, who's an amazing guy, he, you know, he kind of encouraged my music. And my mother was a music teacher and she was really into music. So both of them were into music. My dad was kind of Ray Conniff and... Reader's Digest box sets of show tunes and 
Frank Sinatra and my mother was Dion Warwick and Carol King and you know Silver Convention and you know so I had an amazing music life. So music is a big part. Sport is you know I've grown up on sport. That's it doesn't show in my body, but sport is a massive part of my life and and tech has become a massive part of my life. I enjoy it. I love it. I love what tech can do. What's your relationship with tech? Is it is it trying out stuff and then moving on to the next one when you get bored or is it you know really using it for productivity mm. purposes like it's functional, right? So at Asia, you know, I mean I got sick of people sending emails, right? And email becomes depressing. I used to get 1200 emails. So as you know, I've been pushing for collaboration. Now I I was way ahead of anyone. I you know, I brought in though I hate the company, but we brought in workplace you know, we brought in our own version with Chile, and I, I rather direct communication and messaging has shown the way, right? Whether it's WhatsApp, whether it's you know uh, Line or whatever, right? WeChat, and so why can't corporates communicate the way we communicate socially? It's real time, it's real, and everyone's on the chat, right? As opposed to emails, which is historical. So. I've used tech for productivity. I've been way ahead of the curve of anyone in Air Asia, to be honest. Everything that you see is is me, um, not the tech guys. <laughs> so productivity and usability. Look, we are in a developing country. Tech, you know, if you think about 100 years ago, not so long ago, actually less than 100 years ago, kids were climbing up chimneys to clean uh, chimneys in, in London, right? Each industrial revolution has caused jobs to be lost, but the quality of life has improved dramatically. And tech, why I like it is that it will improve life. Now, there's some drawbacks. Social media, I have very strong views on fake news. Um, you know, I got into an argument with a really old friend in Los Angeles who's like just so against the vaccine and she's sending me this rubbish. You know, and she's brainwashed and she's smart. You know, tech has its good things, but and bad things, but majority really good. So, yeah, go back to your question. Productivity is number one. And two is, you know, I just love how it simplifies your life, right? And, and you know, your mobile phone can do everything now. So, yeah, tech is, tech is a new thing. It isn't, you know, yeah, I used to be the first guy to get the new cassette player, record Hawaii Five O. That was my first kind of video record, right? You didn't have videotape, right? Yeah. So, and then when, when VHS came out, it's like, wow, I was the first guy. I persuaded my dad. My dad, we were the first guys. You guys are too young, but Malaysia changed from black and white TV to color. I begged my father to get the color TV, and he's like, there's only going to be one program. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, I want to have it. And, you know, I was there, and I remember... The moment the Minister of Communication pressed a button and it went color. Wow. Can you imagine oh, wow. that? Wow. Right? Yeah, I missed that one. So so Singapore had color TV. So you'd go to my mom's favorite hotel, the Shangri-La Hotel. And Two channels. It's like, wow, as a Malaysian, you watch, you know, color TV. <laughs> but when it was in my own country, it was like, and I was, that moment, I, I, me- I remember the room, I remember the TV, it was sharp. And... It changed. It was amazing. So technology has always been there. I've always loved having gadgets. You know, I was, we used to have this Sanyo kind of uh, record player that had a cassette player and a radio, and you could you could record from your record player to the cassette. I was the first to have five track cartridge. Um, so you know, we're always there. But now, of course, technology has just gone through the roof, right. right? So it's a lot more exciting. You talked about um, creating content as one uh, being one of your dreams in, mm. in the end. What kind of content are we talking mm. about? Mostly music or? Yeah, music is what I know. Right. Um, you know, but I think content is so critical. Uh, content wins all the time, right? You can have, I mean, I've always said that. You can have all the cable channels in the world, but they're useless now because everyone's moved their content to, to streaming in the yeah. cloud, right? Mm. Yeah. So imagine the billions of dollars, Time Warner Cable and even Astro with all their thing, but people are now streaming everything on their computer. So anyone tells me it's about hardware, I always have said, and, and that's why I left Time Warner, um, content is king. 
and distribution of content will always be king. So you left Time Warner, and but you've created Red Records at AirAsia. And so talk mm. to us about your vision mm. for ASEAN Pop. Do you yeah, think yeah. It'll... So, I mean, it sounds a bit bizarre, but my mind is bizarre. But one day we'll all come together. That's what I'm trying to create. I'm trying to create this AirAsia way of life, right? And you cannot have a way of life without some entertainment. Content for me is what do we find our angle on, right? We're not going to be the next Korean pop company. We're not going to be universal. But AirAsia was about accessibility, right? What did we do? We made fares lower. But what people forget is we flew to destinations and no one else flew. Accessibility is not about price as well. It's about actually physical accessibility. So does a Malaysian artist or a Thai artist have the accessibility that a Korean artist has? or a Japanese artist, or definitely not an American artist, right? So AirAsia is about creating opportunities and, 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 and accessibility. And I'm hoping that we will provide a platform for Southeast Asian content producers, whether they're movies, whether they're short movies, whether there's music, whether it's drama, to have a platform, right? We're not going to challenge Netflix, not in a million years. And, we have to be realistic on that. Um, but can we be a platform for budding new Southeast Asian talent? Absolutely. Will it have a market? Absolutely. When I came into Warner Music, we only sold American music and, and English music. And I went to my bosses and I said, please give me a budget to produce local content. And they said, who's going to be interested in local content? I said, everyone. Because no one's going to be able to see Madonna. But they want to see their local stars, right? They want to see their local football stars. And so we created Ella. We created Sheila Majid. We created Raihan and Dangdut. And, you know, the list is endless. And people want to go to the concerts. I mean, you're not going to go to a Led Zeppelin concert in Kuala Lumpur, right? Or very rarely. Or a Michael Jackson concert or whatever. But you can go and see Ella or Jamal Adila or, you know, Sally Ye. So... I want to create that accessibility as a platform and create content. You know, is it going to be as popular as Netflix? No, but it will be an avenue, mm -hmm. right? And look, the Koreans have shown the way. J-pop showed the way a little bit, but Korea has shown the way. Did I ever think when I was in the music business that a Korean artist would be number one in America? Not a chance. Not a chance. He's talking about BTS, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's only BTS. It's Blackpink. Blackpink. Yeah. Huh. I mean, that has turned the world upside down, right? So, And it's proven my theory that um, the world is globalized. And and so, yeah, maybe we can create some. To answer your question directly, it's a very long-winded answer. The aim is, you know, what did AirAsia do? It took a, a little Malaysian company and made it a global brand. No one can take that away from us. Everyone knows AirAsia. Can we do that um, for destinations? We have, right? Can we do that for content? Harder, but we got a shot. So let's see. Tell us about your vision for health. I mean, mm. not necessarily from an AirAsia perspective, but what do you think? Well, no, I mean, it's know, from a political aspect, right? Yeah. My, 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 look, I'm a, I want to know things about me that no one's ever asked. I'm a caring capitalist, if there's such a thing. No one thinks, you know, Everyone's put into a silo. You're capitalist. You're an asshole. You're a socialist. You know, you're also an asshole to certain people, right? But capitalists, I, I believe that's the only way. A, a, a left-wing controlled economy has never worked, right? And in fact, China has moved away from that. You know, you've created the Jack Mars. You've created Pony Mars. You, you know, um, you know, someone was very visionary at a point and said, we want to be capitalist, but we want to still have socialist principles. Now, the reality is the ec economy is capitalist, but the, the system is still a controlled system, right? So capitalism works, but it has flaws. The major flaw of capitalism is that it doesn't protect the safety net, those below the safety net, right? It tries to, but you know, you'll see the revolution of rich people when Obamacare comes in. Oh, you know, or when the conservative government comes in 
from a Labour government and said, oh, you know, no one wants to work because you, the welfare system is so good. So you're never going to get it right. But, you know, COVID has shown very clearly that the rich will only care about the rich and screw the rest. But we're in a global world. And you're not going to get rid of COVID. You, you can get rid of it in America. But if there's 5 million cases outside of America, it's going to affect America, mm. right? So similarly, rich people have to realize that if there's a, a terrible inequality of the distribution of wealth, you're going to have the French Revolution, right? right. <laughs> Let's face it. Mm. So wealth distribution is the most important thing to me. And does that mean everyone needs to be taxed 90%? No. It, it's, 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 there are better ways of doing wealth. But the most important is the safety net. Revolves around good health as a minimum basic human right. Everyone's responsibility is to have good health. That is a mankind responsibility. Right? You mentioned Sweden as an example, as a good example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll to come go. to that. And, and second is good education, mm. right? These two are basic human rights. Um, you know, Sweden has been able to do it, which is incredible, because they've had some amazing entrepreneurs from the Wallenbergs to mm. the Kias, mm. et cetera, of the world. Their tax rate can be as high as 80% to 90%, right? Yeah, but the returns are huge, yeah, right? So for the citizens. It's all volume, right? And and a richer society means they make more money as well. So it's, it's an Eurasia concept. So I don't understand the taxation system, but it seems to have worked in Sweden. Do I do I think people should be taxed ninety percent? No. You know, should there be a, a an inheritance tax? Absolutely. Should there be a wealth tax? Absolutely. How you use that money is very important. So if I'm gonna lose half my wealth through a wealth tax, I'm fine, provided I know it's going to help the common man, as opposed to build a highway somewhere, which means nothing, right? So yeah, going back to the education thing, health as well. and, and health, because they're both the same. Really, my dream was to build this low-cost hospital, right? Um, I remember. And and I'm not sure where I'm going to get to it, because COVID has turned my life upside down. You know, because I had this vision of stepping down from AirAsia and doing some other things, right? Philanthropic things, but not philanthropic with just writing a check and feeling good about it, but philanthropic to really change. You know, yeah, it won't be as good, but hey, it won't be, won't be far off. Mm. And I've been watching the Khan Academy, and I've been watching... And we all do it, right? We all learn from YouTube and stuff, right? We all learn, you know, I, I you know, digital currencies and and I was watching a fantastic program on meat, you know, and, and how meat is, is destroying the world, right? From the land and the water usage, etc. And so I could learn a, a subject on online and and with the interactivity and chat and stuff, it's almost like being in a classroom, right? Mm. So online has given me the ability to maybe meet those ambitions of low cost health and and low cost education online so let's see you know i'm always skeptical of saying too much because talk is cheap right go out and do it first let's talk about branding so that's something that's dear to your heart and you're so good at it someone on the internet called you the god of branding <laughs> and so and you have a huge personal brand online and offline as well um what what's your secret <laughs> well for myself it, it it still amazes me, you know, walk into Tune Building and everyone wants to take a photograph, right? Mm. And I look like the way I look right now. She must have been 60 plus and she's just like so excited to see me, right? So I still think, because I'm still the same Tony Fernandez in the last 30 years, right? Why is that? And I suppose number one is humility. I mean, I am just the same person, right? And humility comes from communication. The writers who I've met over the last few days have said, wow, you're so humble and I'm just myself. But I suppose I don't have 17 bodyguards around me or 10 PAs following me around, right? And so I suppose my brand is built on the fact that I have been who I am and I've communicated well, even though I don't speak Malay or Bahasa Indonesian or Thai, right? People see me for what I am. I'm, you know, I'm popular in Thailand for the way we've handled some of the crisis in Thailand, whether it's the bowing and some of the other issues, right? In Indonesia, on a 
the way we handled, you know, QZ 8701, 8501. And so I suppose it's just sincerity and transparency and honesty, which seems like common sense, I suppose. And then accessibility, right? It's tiring doing hundreds of interviews. It's tiring to sit there and take 250 photographs, right? But it means a lot to people, so you do it, and that makes a big difference, right? Mm-hmm. So I suppose that is, and then from a branding aspect, on AirAsia, it's, I've always believed in simplicity, commonality of message. I mean, if you think about it, Attila, you were involved in this. Everyone refers to AirAsia as all stars, everyone, right? Worldwide. And that was a brand Attila and me created, right? We called it all stars. And it hit me today that everyone is referring to all stars. The Minister of Science and Technology said, I think soon we can give all stars the vaccine. <laughs> and it, it, it really it hit me, right? That, wow. We've yeah. created a sub brand, right? Mm. That no company has a brand for their employees, right? And so we're, the commonality, the simplicity of the message, and the consistency of the message, right? It's always been all star, all star, all star, all star, right? And party, welcome all stars. Email, hi all stars. Right, it's it's the the Attila and team have been very consistent. I've been very good at saying, I want to name the staff because why did I come up with all stars? Because we had Korean all stars, we had well Korean Air Asia staff, Thai Air Asia staff, and I said, I don't care where you come from. You know my my strong beliefs on diversity. Number one, you're an all star. Number two, you're Thai or Korean or Malaysian or whatever, right? And so I said, you join our family, you're an all star. So, you know, you're a Kim. Or I don't even know your surname, Keman. Um, I just know you as a tiller. So you're Fernandez, right? So you're in this family. You need to have a name for the family. Mm, right? Like so, a last name. Yeah. Mm. So branding is, people didn't realize that. When I said All Star, I was referring to the surname, right? Yeah. No one got it until later, right? So when I said I wanted to create a brand, because if I said I want to create a surname, no one will understand it. But I actually want to create a surname. When you're in a family, you're in a surname, right? And so branding is, you know, people see branding as advertising. It's not. Branding is a hell of a lot more than that. Mm-hmm. Branding starts at home first, right? If your own staff don't understand the brand, then forget it. So what is the religion in AirAsia low cost? What is the brand in AirAsia we got to do it at home first. You've got to understand your brand. We're red. We're low cost. We're energetic. We're innovative. We're all that. And the rest becomes easy, right? Because if your brand is there, then people automatically. So you see it, everyone, all-star. And they have a vision of an all-star, right? This is what an all-star is. He's adventurous. He's innovative. He's different, right? And, you know, people hire all-stars based on the fact that they're an all-star. I'm 100% sure about it. Yeah. And they refer yeah. to the fact that when I was an all-star, yeah. you know, there's always that reference, yeah. right? Well, I did an interview with a Filipino and he just kept saying when he was an all-star, when I'm an all-star, you know, this is what we did as an all-star. Yeah. And over the last month or so, I'm like, wow, we're pretty cool at branding mm-hmm. because I don't think you call him a Samsung Knight. <laughs> right? I think or, you should just come up with that. Or, uh, <laughs> I think you did. You know, or uh, I'm a Netflixer. Uh, you may say I'm an Amazonian, maybe. I think they because, say Googler, but yeah, Google's probably one of the other companies that may be having that, yeah. that kind of culture. But, but I mean, that's forced. In. I don't I don't hear anyone saying I'm a Googler. No. Right? Yeah. But I hear a lot of people say I'm an all-star. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you think of the biggest brands in the world, and you've just mentioned some of them, right? Mm-hmm. You don't say I'm a Microsofter. Right, maybe you're an Amazonian, but I haven't heard that um, either. But we're pretty unique. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, we're good at branding. I didn't really answer your question, but branding is so important, and people don't put enough value. As you, as you know, I drive you guys nuts on the communication releases. That ten different ways of doing it, and Mm. you know, it's so important to get that message across. So. 
to, to go back to your very first question, branding is about communication. If you communicate your brand right, the rest is easy. As AirAsia expands and diversifies its businesses, what have been some of the challenges, I guess, in keeping that brand? Like there's teleport, there's big pay. Mm. Um, so how do you keep that? Yeah, I mean, I, ha- I don't have a recipe for that. I'm still playing around with it, as you know, right? So is it teleport and AirAsia company? Teleport and AirAsia digital company? Is it just teleport, right? Does it need to be associated with AirAsia? It does. You know, much as though I have a bunch of young, hyper, you know, um, what's the word, hormonal CEOs who all want to be the next Tony Fernandez, and 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 they do, and that's a good thing and a bad thing, you know, and want independence and want to break away from the mother brand. They don't realize that it's the mother brand that keeps them alive, right? And what is the mother brand? The mother brand is value. When you say you're an AirAsia company, then people know, oh, okay, it's value. It stands for inclusivity. And all, the, without boring you, with, but all the things that we stand for, right? So, but this is an adventure, right? We're, 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 we're you know, look, I'm a big new fact. First on Talks with Tony, I love Star Trek. Did I understand everything that happened in the program? No, <laughs> but I still love it. Did I understand Leonard Leon Nimoy as Spock? I didn't understand a word he bloody said, right? But what I did understand and what has always stuck in me is we're going into new frontiers. We're going where no man has been before. I love that. I want to go where no man has gone before. And, you know, while people in AirAsia were saying, God, aren't you irritated at Cathay Pacifica copying you? I was like, no, I'm flattered. Because Cathay Pacific is 100 years older and Swire Pacific, you know, was one of the Hongs that went round and, and put British empire into Hong Kong. And now they're copying Little Tony and AirAsia. Or other CEOs delivering stuff yeah. around. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> so we, we, you know, I don't, and look, I didn't create AirAsia. The bottle Southwest did. Herb Kelleher was the founder, and Ryan Air perfected it. No, I think it's. I like that. You know, you know me, right? I'm. I want to do drones. I want to do flying taxis. I want to be the first airline to go to Sundakan. I wanted to be the first airline to go to Pyongyang, right? I really want to do that. Do it. Yeah. So, well, we can't go anywhere right now. So, <laughs> but I hope before I die, I want to do. I wanted to retire. My dream was to retire when AirAsia flew KL, Lisbon, Lisbon, Rio, and I could play football on the Copacabana Beach. Then like, I've, I've been there. I wanted AirAsia to go to every continent in the world, right? So I'm a dreamer. I'm an adventurer, and I'm influenced by Star Trek. You know, that those first words, when, you know, we go into the new frontiers, go where no man has been before, right? <laughs> so you know i still go back to to watch you know um the reruns on netflix yeah 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 i do you I know do. i mean and it's garbage but <laughs> but there are lots of fillers if you watch it there's a lot of tony fernandez in star trek mm. right there's a lot of it from and even then they had diversity right yeah. Um, yeah. and that's in the 60s right star trek's first show was the year after I was born in 1965. And they had colored people and they had Asians in there. Russians. Uh, Russians, yeah. They, they, they were diverse. And in an American society, which was not diverse, mm. right? you still had segregation in uh, the South at that point. So Star Trek was a big influence in me. So, you know, when I remember when you first talked to me about the culture gig and you yeah. said that... I needed to take the bits of me out and institutionalize it. Yeah. And so where does the, you know, where does Tony Fernandez end and, you know, AirAsia begins? I mean, did you have this brand when you were doing Warner as well? Because there's uh, a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. So let me just talk about you for a second, right? So you're a classic example of an AirAsia transformation, right? You came from the Securities Commission. You couldn't have a more different organization from AirAsia and then I met you and I thought how the hell did you ever work in the Securities Commission right because 
you were kind of metrosexual. Um, you loved people and came into a job because you were pigeoned, right, in risk. And you were terrible at it. I mean, you were terrible. And, and I said to Irene, I think, or someone, I said, he's really good with people. You know, you were there with me when we had QZ8501, right? Mm. And you weren't there as a risk person. You were there as a human being. And you didn't care if you had to stay there five months, but you would have been there to help people. Yeah. And I, I'm good at that. I said, this man has, has been in the wrong job for a large part of his life. He loves people. He loves, he's a musician. And so let's put him in an area where he can make a difference, culture and people, right? And I think I liberated you. It's, it's almost like you came out of the closet, right? You were, <laughs> that's a gift in AirAsia that we give people the ability to, to, to be themselves, right? So did you feel that you became yourself when you kind of started? Well, the yeah, no. So go back to your question, uh, and, I, and I digress. Yeah as I have been doing all day, but was there Tony Fernandez in their region? No. I, I mean, in Warner Music. Warner Music. There was elements. I was definitely a very different CEO from the other CEOs. Yeah. The artists were my friends, you know. I would go in, when some of them were on, on drugs, I would sit with them for one week in, in cold turkey. No CEO did that to get them off drugs, right? Um, I won't mention the artist, but he's he very famous. And, you know, I would take artists as my family. So yeah, the elements of me and Warner Music, but Warner Music was not owned by me. I had to report to a bunch of guys in New York, right, who didn't see it my way. And that's why I left. I said, there has to be a better way to run a company. Why did I set up AirAsia? To be a, a rich guy? No. My first message to Cameroon was, I think we can treat people better. And wow, my socialist principles, right? I'm a capitalist, but I have socialist principles was, which Mariana doesn't understand, but, you know, I wanted, she's only interested in flying first class in Korean Air, but <laughs> in my case, I wanted to allow everyone to fly. That's that's me, right? I'm a people person. I I want everyone to be happy, yeah. right? Music, even if you look at my music, it wasn't classical Yo-Yo Ma Korean opera music, right? It was mass music. It was, I created music with Roslan Aziz, that Malaysians, we were the only one, only in history, that Chinese, Indians, Malays would go and listen to Malay music, mm. right? Only history. RAP, record label, which we owned, was the only label where you saw Malay, Chinese, and Indians listening to Zainal, Sheila Majid, Aflin Shafi. Yeah. No one's done that. No. Mm. I could do it as much as I could do it. But in their age, I can do whatever I want. Well, not whatever I want, but, you know. I can impose my culture much more strongly. That's a great question. No one's ever asked me that. And so AirAsia is, yeah, a large manifestation of what I believe in. I can't influence, I don't run Malaysia, so I can't influence diversity as a country. I can't influence giving people better insurance and health and all, but I can do it in my own company, right? And with the support of the board and the shareholders and all. So AirAsia is, a little independent republic of how I think the world should be run, mm. right? Like little utopia. Yeah, well, it's not. I don't think everyone would believe it's <laughs> utopia, but but look, generally, people are really happy, right? In mm. AirAsia, not every day. Mm. We're pretty close to utopia. Mm. We're pretty close to utopia in, a, in terms of a culture. I mean, where we can take a guy who was clearly in the wrong job and, and, and make him, and he has been a large part of building AirAsia culture. It's not me, it's all stars. Yeah, I came up with the idea, but the implementation is all down to the people department, which, and culture department, which was led by three people, right? Three people created this and, you, and you're creating it. It's not just in Malaysia, right? Filipinos call themselves all stars. Indians call themselves all stars, right? They're proud to be all stars. Filipinos. You know, Thais, Thais are fiercely nationalistic. They're the first to call themselves all-stars, right? It's interesting when you see people going to get vaccines, you don't see them wearing their company outfits. But you see AirAsia all wearing their company outfits, right? right? Yeah. right. That wasn't a mandate from us. 
to go wear your outfits. And they're all wearing it, whether you're Thai, whether you're Indonesian, whether you're Indian. Dude. It's very apparent in workplace, right? So branding, you know, I mean, I'm going back and forth from your question, but branding is, is so critical and going back to, to, I couldn't do in Warner Music what I can do in Air Asia. You're known to give opportunities. I'm sure so many people approach you. So many people want that opportunity. How do you spot talent? Fifty percent is people it? approaching you. Mm. That in itself is, well, he's got balls or mm. she's got balls. So that in itself already triggers me. Like, well, they've got something that someone else doesn't. They want something. You've got to want something. If you want something, you've got to go out there and want it. Right? Life is not easy. A lot of Asians t try to look at the shortcut. There is no shortcuts in life. And even if you took a shortcut, you'll get caught in the end, right? So, and that's not criminal. You get caught. If you got a shortcut and you got to the top, in the end, you'll be found out, right? You've got to go through the hard knocks. And so that's 50%. Then what do I look for? I look for people who feel that they, are, they can overachieve, but they haven't been allowed to overachieve. They're forced by the system to underachieve, right? I see that really prevalently in your country in Korea. I see that a lot where because Asians are very feudalistic. I look for people who are passionate to just ask me, courageous. I look for people who feel they can achieve more than they've been allowed to achieve. And then I look for great communicators. Both of you attracted me because of your communication skills, right? So even if you're a tech guru, you still need to communicate. So the most important thing to me is communication. Why did I get the job with Richard Branson? I talked to him. You know, if I wrote in and wrote CV and sent video resume, <laughs> but I talked to him. I was going to say, because you actually made the effort to get into the, into the lift. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it wasn't the lift, to be fair. It was just the door. The, oh, I <laughs> but still, but still, you but, just, just kind of. But he just, opened the door and I thought, oh my yeah. God, he's in front of me, right? What I always say to people is, what's the downside? He could, he could always just say, well, bugger off. Or, and I wouldn't have lost anything anyway because he'd never see me again anyway, right? Mm -hmm. But on the upside, he might say, wow, something special about you, which he did say. Now, a lot of people wanted to hear um, about your failures and what mm. you, I guess. I mean, there's Formula One and yeah. all of that. But I, I don't believe anything you... is a failure. And does that sound facetious? No, because life is about failures and successes. Mm. I'm a better person for failing at Formula One. But did I fail? I got onto the grid. I'm one of the teams that got onto a Formula One grid. Success. Is failure all about money? Is failure all about you have to win the world championship? No. As a little Malaysian, me, Cameroon, and NASA got a Formula One car onto the grid in F1. That's a success. Right? Did I lose lots of money? Yes. But is life measured by your wealth? That is an Asian aspiration. There are many trillionaires out there. And I think, what a boring life. It's life about wealth accumulation. That's what Asian parents will say, oh, be rich, be this, be a doctor. Life to me is about making a difference and living life, right? So what? I didn't win Formula One. Yeah, I lost hundreds of millions, but I did it. That's a success. I grew up, I love motor racing. I grew up with my father, who was an avid sportsman. Yeah, it was a failure financially, but it's a massive success in our brand, a massive success in getting there, mm. right? We measure failure and Asians measure failure in strange ways. You know, if a Malaysian kid got to the Olympics and came last, that's not a failure. That is, they got to the Olympics, man. That's a success. And we should be celebrating that. You know, we get to the final of an Olympics and we lose. I'm thrilled. Mm. Who, of course we want to win the gold medal. But we got there. I wanted to say that because the automatic thing of Formula 1 is failing. And I've said it myself, right? But in reality, I just because this is a show which hopefully people will listen and get some messages out, I measure things differently. Is the question, have we won against COVID? Yeah. 
Damn right we have. We've won because we're alive. <laughs> right? That's a success. We've won because Eurasia is still alive. You learn humility for a start that you don't know everything. And, but I've never felt that, but you still <laughs> learn. And I, I dare say you learn more from your failures than successes, and that builds you up to be able to stop the failures. Now, you can have a mini failure that prepares you so you don't make a major failure, <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, I've had a bit of both. <laughs> so I'd rather try and fail than not try at all. You know, without sounding facetious, I've had hundreds and hundreds of failures, but I don't regret any. Failed in a marriage, right? That doesn't, that doesn't mean that it's sad. It, it's not conventional. People don't want you to, but there is no such thing as prepares you for a marriage, right? There's nothing. You, you don't know, right? There's no university course that can teach you for that, and you're going to make mistakes, right? So, yeah, my biggest failure is my marriage, for sure. You know, that affects other people, right? It affects your kids. And that's not cool. But, you know, do you carry on when you're not happy or do you, do you try and make it your, it's your life, right? Um, but invariably, a lot of people, which included me, is you hang in there for the kids, right? Or for society or whatever. So I use that example because, you know, Failure must be ended. You've got to cut it off and say, you screwed up. Take the hit and move on. Right Now, it's easy to do in the corporate world, right? As you've seen, I, I can hmm, 360 degrees change. When I think we're going down the wrong direction, I'll just, I don't have any ego. Harder in personal life. Mm. Harder in personal life. But probably the best advice I can give anyone is that when you know you've hit a brick wall, you've got to make that hard decision. So if you had your successes, you've had your failures, and you continue to have successes, what is one thing that you'd still put in a bucket list? Oh, yeah, I'd like to win a gold medal at the Olympics. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. But, uh, you know, in what? Well, well it ain't. Bubble. It ain't, you know, but, you know, that was my, I was, I, I've lived all my dreams, right? I own a football club done Formula One, I owned an airline, I've been in a record company. I mean, I'm a Roy of the Rover story, right? I've been thin, I've been fat, I'm still fat. Um, but yeah, I would have loved to have won a gold medal. I think that's, that's like, wow, you know, standing there on the podium and looking at your country's flag. Wow, that was my ultimate dream, right? Mm -hmm. So if you... Well, there's the Veteran Olympics, so you can never say never. Right? That's true. That's true. Or the, we should do a Corporate uh, Olympics. So if, if we've got a bucket list, we've gone through successes, failures, your insights and things, if there was a movie about you... Oh, wow. Go on. You know, you know this question's coming up. If there was a movie about you, who would you get to play? Oh, uh, yeah, Will Smith. Did you give him a heads up? <laughs> <laughs> I am legend. He essentially saves humanity. So is that is that yeah, no. your plan? I mean, I, I think I, you know, I, I remember having those kind of dreams as kids, right? Yeah. That you know, I'd be the savior, and mm. I'd be the captain on the plane that saved the, the plane with no engines and stuff. That, those were always those things when you were a kid. Uh, yeah, Will Smith would be cool, but look, hey, no one's going to do a movie on me, so you never know. Mm. Well, what are some of your pet peeves? Pet what? Pet peeves, as in like what irritates What annoys you, you the what most? Oh, negative you. people. Negative people. That's the number one. Mm. I hate negativity. And, and, I, and that's, a, that's probably the main thing. Like moaners, mm. negative, you know. There the are a thousand reasons to say no. There's one that says yes. I love the people that say, yes, I'm going to do it. It just makes life easier. Uh, politicians? You don't like I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> Would you run for office? Because so many people want you to. So there's a, a hordes of people who want you to yeah. run for office, but you'd make a great it, politician. Yeah, it's definitely a dream. It's definitely there. Yeah. It's, definitely, it's definitely there. 
you got to be real whether you could be a good politician. Politics is a lot of compromise. Yeah. And running Air Asia, you compromise for sure. You got to do things that you wouldn't have done in, invariably. And some of you have lived through some of the things I did where you know that was against what I believe in. But politics is a hell of a lot more compromise because there are many, you know, it's not easy. It's easy to criticize a politician, but it's not easy. I would love a politician, why I get frustrated, I'd love a politician to put people first as opposed to themselves. And COVID has exposed the weaknesses in politicians. If I was a politician now, at whatever, whether I was in power, whether I was not in power, my number one thing is solve COVID. If that means I don't get into power for a while, so be it. Solve COVID. And two, solve the economy. And I would love to see a government and politicians that don't care about power right now. And every MP is fighting to save this country right now. The battle will come for elections. Then go fight it out. But right now we're wasting so much time on bitching mm. and moaning. That's a peeve. I get frustrated when I see one politician say something and just because he said something, another guy has to say it's rubbish. Well, why don't we all help each other <laughs> to make it better, right? You like, make it sound very simple. and But it I is may, simple. Maybe, yeah, that's how It is simple. AirAsia is a simple company. I don't allow politics. There's a lot of politics. Mm. There's a lot of bitchiness. There's a lot of people that fight with each other. They can't do it with me. Right? Because I don't allow it. And I'll bring it out in the open and say, he said this, you said this. What's the problem? <laughs> right? You know my style. Mm. So I don't understand it. We had the greatest humanitarian crisis. And we're just criticizing each other. We're getting a room together and come out with great ideas. And yeah, elections will come. Fight it out then. Mm. It's not the time now. So that's a peeve. What's that another peeve? Inefficiency. I hate inefficiency. For talent that wastes its talent. Because you may have talent. God gave you talent, but it, you've got to work at it still. And I hate that. I hate seeing smart people in my company who don't go out to excel. I hate it. Because you've got something I don't have. I'd love to have it. Maximize it. Right, so that's a that's a major P for me, and those of you who work for me know that that I hate seeing people who have talent that underperform, right? That that you know, because or, or have been given opportunities that blow it. That really pisses me off. Mm. <laughs> okay, don't believe your own press and think that you're something you're not. This no. is great ASMR, by the way, by Tony Fernandez. <laughs> What's ASMR? You, What's that? Uh, the, you know, the sensory, the, you know, people, it's, it's huge on YouTube when people listen to other people chewing. You see those things? They eat in front of the camera exactly. so they can hear them munching like, and yeah. it's weird. I've no, learned something. I've never heard of ASMR. You're doing it now. That's okay. what it is. I'm just eating. <laughs> yeah, we can hear it. It's really good. Uh, yeah. You should watch it on YouTube. It's weird. You want to hear me slurp water like the Korean? <laughs> no, okay, that one. We'll, we'll put a line there. <laughs> but, you know, just fun questions. I thought, you know, you a morning or a night person? Morning. Morning. Mm. Okay. I don't like going to bed because I love life, right? It's like. <laughs> Then you're a night person if you don't want to go to bed. Then you're, you're I guess, morning No, but I know what you mean, though, because when you night. wake up in the morning, it's like it's the, the whole day. day. <laughs> the whole ah, day, jinx. right? So I, I, like, I like morning for sure. Mm. Go on, fire one last one. Last one. One weird quirk. I like pressing noses. What? Are you yeah. serious? That is weird. What, yeah. you mean like New Zealand <laughs> Maori style? Yeah, no, physically. I like my dog's nose. I like to press your nose. <laughs> I'm, I'm into noses. I, I don't know why. I love noses. We got our scoop. I'm a very That's no a I'm, scoop. We have I'm, some headlines. I'm a very nose expert <laughs> because I'll know whether you've had a plastic surgery. You haven't. <laughs> uh, but are you tactile? Are you like PDA? 100%. You know, Livy Newton-John, let's get physical. That, that's, that was my theme song. Have you met her? No. Let's get physical. 
Frisico. You know, fortunately, I remember that song. I want to get Frisico. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, that just about brings us to the end of the first edition of Talks with Tony from next week. Tony will be at the helm interviewing lots of um, interesting people from all walks of life. Yeah. I mean, I think just to put everyone in perspective, it's a learning experience for me. I've always been interviewed. And to be an interviewer is quite different, mm. right? I mean, you've done it professionally, uh, Mariana. But I feel, you know, like the next one I'm doing, I'm ready for it. But it's taken about four or five shows to really kind of kind of be on the other side. Because for 19 years, I've been uh, being interviewed, right? Mm. And it's a lot easier than, than in some ways taking the secondary seat. And... Uh, can you ATMR. <laughs> no, ASMR. <laughs>